Okay, so let's convert a context-free grammar into a PDA. The basic idea behind converting a context-free grammar into a PDA is just to realize that um, the reason you have an arrow here is actually a hint uh, that you also have a, an arrow in your PDAs. Um, the way you interpret them, basically you kind of use the PDA as an interpreter of of grammar rules. So that's the basic idea. You want to use, um, if you ever, if you if you took CS450 um, or are, are taking 450, the whole idea is really, uh, if you're implementing with a, uh, a, an interpreter of a programming language, um, you have this this loop, but in a, re in a functional programming language, you have a, a recursion where you're going over, you're executing the language step by step. Um, if it's something like C, you would do each statement one at a, you know, one line at a time. Um, and in um, functional programming language, you're kind of going through a tree. Um, but in in this, in a context-free grammar, you're doing something similar with a PDA. You're going to have a central state that is just going to be um, whenever it it um, receives, let's say, a variable. You're going to try to you're going to use the stack to um, represent the rule. So let's say you have these two rules. One way to interpret them is, okay, so whenever I see a variable, because it's going to produce these things, right, you can imagine that whenever you, you your uh, central state that represents the interpreter loop of the PDA, if you have in your uh, stack uh, variable to process, that means that you have some some program to execute, if you will. So what does that mean? Basically, you have to look up S, and then you can non-deterministically either do this or that. So if you, you if you can picture in your mind, basically each of these things will be represented as um, states, uh, a new state that you're going to process. So let's say you are, you are in the central loop, and you find an S. What you do is go to a state where you process A, S, B, or non-deterministically you can also whenever you read an s uh, where whenever you pop an s from the stack you can also um, process this so what is what is processing a rule processing a rule is basically you're going to push a terminal right in this case or you're going to push a variable and then you're going to push a b so you're going to push these three things into the stack okay so now what do you do when you read an l so in this central loop or central state that represents this interpreter loop, whenever you read a terminal, whenever a terminal is in your uh, top of the stack, you're going to read it and you're going to advance uh, the, the types. You're going to consume an input whenever there's a terminal in the stack. Um, so that takes care of this. And then a variable is done recursively, right? Because if you've pushed A, S, B, basically, in your central loop, whenever you find a terminal, you will consume it and read something from the input. Otherwise, you will read a variable, which you will, again, push to the stack and consume it again back in the central loop. Or then eventually you will read another um, B, which is another terminal. And the basic idea is that because this is a non-deterministic uh, automaton, each of these, um, if each if you have a state that consumes the input of each rule, and because it's non-deterministic, you are going back to the beginning, so you can choose another branch. That means you will eventually explore all possible uh, rules. That's the basic idea. So let me explain what is the strategy. So first you do the usual thing. You just push the Sentinel dollar sign on, onto the stack. And then what you do is you push the initial variable. Okay, And then in the loop, what you're going to have is steps two, three, and four, which happen non-deterministically, depending on what you have on the stack and on your input. So if you if you have if you have on top of the stack a variable, you're basically going to execute a rule. If you have a terminal, you're going to read, you're going to pop that terminal and read the input. Um, you're going to read that terminal from the input. 
Otherwise, your stack is empty and it means you are you have achieved. So let's see kind of how it would execute to process this step by step and get the intuition of how you would execute it. So let's say my stack, the first step is step zero. So we're going to push dollar sign. So we have this in the, uh, by output, we mean the stack. Okay, so our stack has a dollar sign. And then what we do, we push s, the initial variable, right, s. Okay, so now we have this on the stack. Because we have this on the stack, we can do either of two things. We could either process this uh, epsilon or we could process this um, rule. So let's say non-deterministically we chose to process this rule, which is what we're doing on this step two. So if we did that, then we popped A and we pushed A as B. So now our stack, we replaced, see we're rewriting the stack and we're pushing the rule onto the stack. Okay, so now we read A, now A is on top. What do we do whenever we find a terminal? Oh, that's simple. We pop the terminal and read the input. So we consume the input A, finally. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, now what is on top? On top is S. What do we do? Let's say non-deterministically we chose to read the first rule again. So we push it again and now we have A, S, B, B. Okay, so our input is still the same. Uh, now A is on top. What do we do? If A is on top, we do 3. So 3, we pop the terminal and we read the input. So we read two A's at this point. What is on top? S. Let's say that now we chose to um, we chose the rule epsilon. So if we choose the rule epsilon, which is this rule, nothing happens. We simply pop the S from the stack. And now on our stack, we have two terminals, B and B. So each of these terminals, we're going to run the rule 3 again. So we're going to consume these three terminals. We finally have an empty stack and we are ready to conclude. Um, so if the stack is empty, we could, could run step four and recognize string A, A, B, B, which is what we would like to do. So that's the basic intuition of how this works. Now let's see how we generate the PDA from a given context-free grammar. So this would be um, the, P the target PDA given grammar that is given by this grammar here. Okay. So in this grammar, there's only two rules and steps zero and one are easy, right? You always push the sentinel and then you push the state variable and then you're going to have Q3. Q3, as I told you before, is going to be the central loop. So in the central loop, if at any point the stack is empty, you can go to Q4. That's exactly what we were talking here, right? If the stack is empty, the, the string has been recognized. So you go to Q4. And now what do you do? You're going to have each of these squares, so you're going to have essentially an edge, which possibly has some states, that represents pushing a rule, right? You're going to push this rule ASP or you're going to push the rule epsilon. So let's see how we did that. Um, let's say this just means that and this means, means the other rule. The last step that we wanted to talk about is pop terminals from the stack and read the input. So for every terminal that is in your grammar, which is A and B, you're going to have a rule. So that's why this is here. Okay. Uh, and then finally, what does the rule actually mean? So the, the only complication is how do we generate this and this? Because all of the rest is fixed. It's the same for all grammars. You're always going to generate Q1 to Q2, and you're always going to push dollar sign from Q2 to Q3. You're always going to push the start uh, variable or initial variable. And then in Q3, you're always going to have this self loop where we read all the terminals. And finally, from Q3 to Q4, you're always going to have this edge that can that pops dollar sign and accepts. So let's learn a bit. How do we do these these edges that represent rules? Ah, uh, let's do that in the next video. But for now, let's just see, uh, convince ourselves that However, I, whatever I did to generate this PDA still recognizes uh, A of N, B of N. So uh, let's say we want to read. Uh, what do we want to read? Oh, wow. <laughs> this is very small. 
I'm going to make it in the, when I publish it on, on the web, I'm going to make this slide a bit bigger. But here what I'm reading is, let's see, absent, 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 A, A, B, B. Okay, that's what we're reading. Um, yeah, if you try to read A, A, B, B, as you know, there's a lot of steps where you have to push the rule. So you're going to have a lot of intermediate steps uh, just to do A, A, B, B. And if you recall, we actually wrote um, a PDA that recognizes A of N, B of N, that is way smaller than this one. So, of course, this is not optimized. And by optimized, I mean uh, using fewer states. But it is equivalent, which is what we're, we care about. So, uh, just to sum it up, to summarize, we're always going to have these three, uh, one, two, three, four states for every conversion from context free grammar to PDA. And now the difficulty is how do we generate the these edge rules that we call edge that's the represent rules. Uh, this is point five. So that's basically what you're going to learn uh, in the next video.